Fostu. Welcome to Creative Home Studio. chopped up because of expo but I think that it will be enjoyable for you to watch because I won't just be sitting in one spot blah 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 <laughs> uh, today is Friday March 5th and tomorrow's expo so we've been crazy getting ready crazy busy getting ready we're pretty much ready other than We're gonna move. We're gonna move our kind of makeshift booth. See, I wasn't going to set up a booth. I was just gonna have my models sitting there if someone needed a closer look at something or whatever. But Kevin made a good point. He said, "Well, I really hope the internet's good for us during the show." And I'm like, "Oh, I like never thought of that because it can be sketchy down here at the studio. And if I was in the middle of taking an order from somebody and we blanked out." and they couldn't communicate with me. I'd be really upset. So for the trial run yesterday, we had a trial run, I'll get to that in a minute, it's kind of funny. Uh, we went, I had my laptop up at the house because I can plug directly in with the ethernet cable to my, is it a modem or a router? I don't know which one does what, but anyway, I was plugged in directly so that we would have a good connection. So we decided, I made the executive decision again, to put, because in the basement it's kind of dark and, you know, we have, it's more mood lighting down there, you know, it's not a, a workplace, it's a hangout place. So we're going to bring lights up there, I'm going to set up the booth and just have the models hanging behind me so that it looks good and then they can see them behind me, I think that would be appropriate. We'd have great connection that way. We're going to bring up one of our computers because the laptop is small. We have big Apple computer screens. And so we're going to bring one of those up. We're going to bring one of our printers up. So in case we need to print orders and things, bring my PayPal device up so that I can run credit cards. So I, I'm kind of making a little makeshift studio up there for the weekend. So we're going to work on that later today. And then today when I was getting ready to come down here to the studio, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm supposed to film floss tube tomorrow. So I'm, as I'm blow drying my hair, I'm thinking about it all. And I'm like, well, you know, I could get up at five and I could do my floss tube and get it edited and uploaded, you know, hopefully before market starts. And I'm like, okay, I'm just going to make myself crazy doing that. So then I decided, well, I will just do a little videotaping down here at the studio today. And then I will do some videotaping a little bit in the morning right before the show starts and kind of show you the setup and everything. And so it will be a little bit choppy, but I think it'll be fun that way. So welcome. My name is Teresa Colgate with Great Homes. <laughs> if you're new here, welcome. And if you've been with me the whole time, I so appreciate it. Uh, I won't be doing a giveaway this episode just because there's just too much going on and We'll just wait. I'm going to do a market recap like I always do, or I call it market recap. I guess it'll be expo recap. So let me get into how the trial run went yesterday. I tell you, I tell you, I'm really not blonde, but woo, I have some blonde moments. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be mean to anybody that's blonde, but you know the, how the saying goes. Anyways, so the trial run was at 1 o'clock yesterday, Thursday, for, I forget what exactly the alphabet was, but it was like A through, let's just say M. So A through M at one o'clock, you're supposed to go in your booth and hit, you know, chat, live chat, or yeah, I think it was live chat. You click that. And then, and then within that group, if you are A through, uh, let's just say F, you stay in your booth. And if you're G through M, 
you go as if you're a buyer and go into booths and place orders to see how it all works for a half an hour. So from 1 to 1.30, you do that. And then at 1.30, everyone switches. And if you were in your, your booth, now you go out and do your shopping. And then the people that were doing their shopping go to their booth. And it's just a way to see how it works so that we're familiar with it come Saturday morning. Here's the deal, y'all. We had our grandkids yesterday. There's no way, I'm so basically, that was at one, let me back up. I was at one and then at 6 p.m., uh, the alphabet, the letter, if your you know, business name starts with N through Z, you are going on at 6 p.m. Eastern time and do the same thing from 6 to 6.30. The first half of the group is going to be in their booth while the others go and place orders and visit in the booths and then everyone flip-flops and then you go shop while everyone else is in their booth, okay? I think it was awesome. It was an awesome way to do that. And I mean, Janice has thought of everything and she's just done a great job getting this all organized and ready for us. Well, here's the clincher. Because we had the grandkids, at 6 p.m., there's no way I could have done it. The grandkids are wild and crazy at that time <laughs> in full play mode. By then, Kyle and Ryan are home. I'm feeding everybody between six and seven. It's just, there was no way I could have done that time. So I'm like, well, she, and she said in the email that if you can't make your time, do the other one. And, okay, do the other time. So I'm like, okay, one o'clock is great because the kids go down for their nap between 12 and 12.30. That'd be awesome. They'll be fast asleep. Kevin and I can sit down and do this thing together because he wants to know how it works too because he's going to be helping me. So Janice had mentioned if you're doing another time, I let me know I will come and find you. So I emailed her and told her I couldn't do the 6 p.m. I was doing the 1 o'clock, but I didn't email her like early enough, I guess. I don't know. So here I am, so back up. When I first hit open live chat, <laughs> this is so funny. I hit open live chat and bam, Beth Seals from Summer House Stitchworks is on and bam, Wendy from Heart and Hand Design. They're both on there. And I'm like, hi, and we start talking. <laughs> and I'm like, so whose booth are we in? Because I said, all I did was hit start live chat and um, they both did the same thing. So I don't know if they were in my booth. I don't know if I was in Beth's booth. I don't know if I was in Wendy's booth. We don't know whose booth we were in because basically on the screen, there was our three pictures and it didn't say, it didn't say who was hosting or whose booth you were in. And since I just hit the live chat, when I did that, I should have been in my booth. But if that's what they did too, then they should have been. I don't know how that worked, but we chit-chatted for a few minutes. And then I said, well, I'm going to go ahead and go to the main hall and see if I can enter another booth and just see what's going on. So I, we all kind of went our separate ways. Good luck, y'all. <laughs> and I thought, oh, Annie B's. So it's in. So when you go into the main hall where all of the vendors are, all the designers and, you know, anybody that's a vendor. So it could be a distributor. It can be uh, people that sell linen, people that sell floss, anybody that's there selling. You go to the main hall and it's in alphabetical order. So the first one up there was Annie B's Folk Art. And I'm like, I know Annie, I'm going to go say hi. So I click on hers. Well, she wasn't there. So maybe she had a scheduling conflict. I don't know. So then I'm like, who else do I know that I would go check out? And I'm like, oh my gosh, what about Lucy Beam? Um, Her name totally, Becky Nolan, geez, Becky. <laughs> so anyway, I'm like, I'm gonna go see Becky. So I go find Lucy Beam, I pop in there, she's there. So her and I chit chatted a bit and I asked her how she was taking orders and how I was gonna do it. And uh, so there's different ways you can have people place an order. And so she was gonna go to my booth and place an order so that I could see how it works. And then I uh, clicked her message and then I 
said, hey, what's up, blah, blah, blah. And my message was too short. I, I think I said, hey, good luck at the show or something. I don't know what I said. And I hit send and it said, this is too short of a message. So I'm like, okay, Becky, I'm just going to hit a bunch of buttons. <laughs> Hopefully I don't sell, spell anything bad. So, and then I click send so she could see how that works or if it works. You know, we want to make sure all of our links work. I will, you know, she wanted to make sure that when someone hit a message, it would go to her, uh, her email account. So I have to, I have yet to check to see if I got a message from Becky. But anyways, so we chatted for a while and then I left and I thought, well, I should probably go back to my room, my booth to see if anybody's there. So I go back there and I'm sitting there and sitting there. Okay, y'all, it didn't dawn on me. This is how flighty I can be. It didn't dawn on me until this morning. Well, duh, you moron. No, nobody came to your booth because they were only going from alphabet, the alphabet of A through M. Why would somebody come to T? Because you're not supposed to be on until 6 p.m. So now, looking back, I wish I would have just went and visited a bunch of booths. Well, another reason I went is because I thought, well, Janice might show up. And, you know, I just didn't know what to do. So I basically know how it works, but I don't know it what, like, what it looks like when someone comes to my booth. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, later today, I'm going to go. There's a private Facebook group that we're all in, and that's where people are asking questions and concern, any concerns they have or anything. So I'm going to go read through that and see if anybody had any trouble or, you know, if, anyways. So just wish me luck. Okay, so, uh, oh, and a little bit of grandkid update. Easton pretty much repeats everything you say. So be careful. Last week, I told you guys that I had to take Alexa and put her away. I plugged her and just put her away because Easton kept cranking it up full blast. So this week, I got sick of, I never did replug it back in. So I'm like, okay, we're cleaning and everything. So I plugged it back in, but I, I used to have it down low, like where he could reach it. And obviously I can't do that anymore. So I put it, I had this like pedestal thing that sits behind a chair and the chair is kind of kitty corner, catty corner, cockeyed, whatever you want to say, to the corner and then the pedestal's behind it. So I set it up on there. So I'm thinking if they see it, they can get up in the chair and they can reach it. But if they don't notice it, we'll just see how it goes. So when we got there, uh, they instantly, I think it was Easton that went over and was looking for Alexa where it normally is. And Ellery's like, where's Alexa? And, um, <laughs> and Brianna goes, Alexa's in timeout. I'm like, yeah, we had to put her away. And so they dropped it and that was the end of that. Well, later in the day, I actually got video of Easton. He got up in that chair and he saw Alexa. And he's over there going, Alexa, Alexa. And the thing was spinning. Like she was responding, but he wasn't asking her to do anything. So it didn't do it. It was so adorable. I got a little video of it, but by the time I got my phone and was recording him, he was still saying Alexa, but it wasn't like, no. So I'll try to remember to put it at the end of this video. And what was the other funny thing? Oh yeah. So I'm like, okay, we're going to get the grandkids down. We got everything set up in the basement, you know, to do this uh, little run through for the expo. And they, I put Easton down. He's so easy. You put him in the pack and play. Give him a teddy bear, which he just loves this teddy bear. It was my old friend, teddy bear that I designed. Anyways, and I cover him with a blanket. I give him a kiss. I say, sweet dreams. We'll see you in a couple hours. Shut the door. He's out. He's done. And he usually sleeps three hours, if not more. Her, and then for Ellery, she, I have a, like a little cot that we pop up and she has blankets and Spongebob blanket and a pillow and she's all comfy cozy. I do have a monitor that I watch her because she's a little mischievous. And uh, we took the monitor with us and anyways, no, we didn't. I had the monitor sitting on the counter upstairs. And so before we went downstairs, I checked it. She's, I knew she wasn't asleep yet. She takes a while to fall asleep unlike Easton. So we go downstairs and then while we're going live, I could hear her voice and I thought it was the monitor. And I'm like, what's going on? Well, Kevin, she had gotten out of bed. She's standing at the top of the stairs because we have a gate and she's talking and she wants to come see grandma Gigi. 
So Kevin brings her downstairs for a minute and I'm thinking, no, I wasn't live yet. I was going on in like two minutes and I'm like, what is happening to my life right now? <laughs> Why is she not sleeping? So he goes, well, I'll, I'll just take her upstairs and you do your thing and I'll, you can fill me in on how it goes later. Okay, cool. I'm thinking he's going up there and he's putting her back in bed, which is what I would have done had I been in charge because she needs sleep. This girl needs sleep. So he doesn't, he lets her stay up. And then I get done with the, the expo thing and I can hear, no, I hear, no, this what it was two minutes left in the expo thing. That's right. And I hear this crash and I thought something fell over on one of the kids. I mean, of course, you know, I, my mind goes to the worst thing. I go flying up the stairs. She had gotten into the back bedroom where Easton sleeps and picked this big thing up and, and it fell. Thank God it didn't fall on her foot. It would have broke her foot. And she was just standing there looking at it because it scared her. And, and I'm like, why is Easton up? What are you doing in Easton's room? What, what is happening right now? These kids normally, there's times I have to go and wake Ellery up at like four o'clock because she's still sleeping. She didn't take a nap and Easton took a short nap. And I'm like, of all days, of all days when I have this expo thing going on, I just thought it was funny. Kevin goes, well, of course that's how it's gonna go. Why wouldn't it? <laughs> oh Lord. So she ended up falling asleep later. I knew she would cause she needs her rest. She fell asleep in Kevin's arms later in the day. I'll insert her picture. It's just the cutest thing ever. So, Yesterday was a crazy busy. I made ham dinner, mashed potatoes and green bean casserole, and we all just pigged out. Pigged out, get it? It was a ham. It was so good. It was That's one of my favorite meals. And then I'm making bean soup in the crock pot Saturday during the expo. Uh, so I have bean soup and cornbread Saturday night. Anyways, that's my life. That's what happened this past week. Uh, whips. I'm going to do whips up at the house because that's where I have my needlework. But y'all, I did, on last Sunday, I did 204 stitches. And then Monday night, I did 193 stitches on my cross stitch. So my goal was to have it done by tomorrow. But I'm a dreamer. I'm a total dreamer. And that did not happen. But um, hopefully next week, I will have that little piece done. Remember, it's it's a big piece, but I'm just doing part of it and I'm gonna make some sort of little pillow out of it, I think. And then I'm gonna start a new one. I can't wait to start something new. Listen to me. It's gonna be something small, that's for sure. So anyway, uh, I will insert whips, my needlework whips somewhere in here, but I'm gonna talk about my uh, painting whips. So for CW Live, we started a new project and I love it, it's so cute. We are doing farm animals every session. We have done a sheep, a cow, and now a chicken. Did we do, we did a sheep and a cow. Sheep was session one, the cow was session two. I don't know what we did. Maybe session three we didn't do an animal. I don't know, but anyway, but we did a, a chicken. Hello Americana chicken! So we're not done. It's close to being done because it's only 11 by 14, so it went really quick. But I love how the flag turned out. It really looks like it's waving. And the chicken, well, my favorite part, though, are the little chicks. They got little hats on. I, the, little, the last little guy looks like he has a witch hat on because I forgot to paint his hat. But that little middle chick is my favorite little guy. So anyways, we're going to finish that up this Tuesday. I went ahead and did the crackle because I wanted to see how it would crackle on all this fresh paint because I just, you know, it was still barely dry to the touch and I put the crackle on. So as you can see, the crackle turned out awesome. So I may crackle it again because I am going to be painting more over it and doing some sanding and stuff. So, but I can make that decision uh, after Tuesday. Then Wednesday for which paint Wednesday. So Wednesday, uh, I came down and started working on Bridget and I painted probably two and a half to three hours on her before I did Witch of Paint Wednesday because I think I told you guys this last week that, you know, during Witch of Paint Wednesday, I'm there visiting and talking with everyone and Kristen and I are talking and I have a hard time making like big decisions in a painting because of all that extra thing going on. But if I'm painting like 
detail or I, you know what I mean? Like, anyways, so I wanted just some time not being on camera to paint. So I made some major changes to her and she is looking awesome. So I'm going to insert a picture that shows you the before I started working on her Wednesday morning and then the after of working on her Wednesday morning. The before picture, she's very static looking. Her eyes look like she's like surprised. And then the after picture, she just has a softness about her. Her eyes are more soft. Her complexion is way more beautiful than it was in the before picture. There's more uh, shadowing around the sides of her face. I put a lot of pink highlights in her hair. I changed her dress completely. It was just uh, like a teal or turquoise color before. I put flowers in it. Uh, I basically painted over the entire painting <laughs> Wednesday morning. I changed her wings. Her wings were white and I changed them to a cream color and I put white lines in there to kind of uh, give the look of feathers. And then uh, let's go this way. I put a different color on that house and it matches way better. The Look at the texture on the grass, y'all. That is made with a layering block that Kristen bought me and it's just layered paint and it's so grungy looking. I love it. I worked on the trees. I added leaves into the trees. I added that cute little bird. I added the cute little bird. First the bird was red, but it was competing too much with these two things and I didn't like it. So I changed it to this yellow. She's got blush on. And then this is decoupaged on. This is from, when we go to church now, we don't use the missiles because of COVID. So our music guy, <laughs> our music guy, Tony, he prints things for us to have every week for the music and for the readings. And then I, you're supposed to either take them with you or throw them away, you know, because of COVID. Well, I collect them all. So we get two a week because Kevin has one, I have one. And I've been collecting them this whole time for a reason. I'm going to cover an entire cradled board and paint uh, Mary and Jesus on it coming up soon. I'm going to start that on Watch Paint Wednesday. Anyways, all that just to say that I cut this out of one of those papers and it's just got some music notes and it's got this, you know, it says hearts beat high with joy, blessed would be our fate, truth that comes from God. Anyway, so I found a song that I liked and a part of a song that had some good words in it. I painted the sky different. So <laughs> I pretty much did a whole makeover on this painting and it just looks so much better. So it's, it's pretty much done. Uh, I don't know what else I would do other than I'm probably going to do uh, a little bit of maybe some washes on it and uh, some antiquing, maybe some crackle. I don't think I'll crackle the whole thing, but crackle some spots here and there. So she's pretty much done. I'm really hoping to start on a new one this coming Wednesday. Okay, so the other thing I want to go over while I'm here in the studio is haul that I got this week. I told you I was getting more finishing things from Dames of the Needle, and that showed up. She had to dye this for me. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Oh my gosh, look at this velvet. I will never have to buy velvet again for finishing, probably for my entire life, because I have so much velvet now. But look at these colors. Are you kidding me? So something I, I, I talked about how I want to do some more simple, easy uh, cross stitch pieces. A lot of my pieces are more intense stitching and a lot of a lot of stitches. And I want to do some smaller pieces and stuff, which also leads me to the fact that I've never designed, you know, something for a pillow specifically other than those star ornaments. But those are ornaments. I want to do some drums and some pillows and some different things rather than just having everything as wall art, you know what I'm saying, uh, framed or finished so that it sits on a shelf or on, hang on a wall. So I want to do some smalls and different things. So these will come in handy. All of the uh, 
velvet that I've gotten from Elizabeth will come in handy. Also, I mentioned last week that I'm going to start in April. I'm going to start doing on Mondays. You know my schedule. I try to get down here in the morning and do painting in the morning for two to three hours. Well, on Mondays, I'm going to going to dedicate that to faith journaling and so I've been collecting things for journaling and I'm going to show you some of the things I got. I'm so excited to get this organized and get it started. Oh, one of the things is way over there. I have to go get it. My goodness, I've got a lot of stuff here. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready to see all this cool stuff? Look at this washi tape. Why isn't it coming out? Look at the colors and the patterns on this washi tape. Focus, please. There we go. Look at it. Look how cute. So that will be so fun to use for journaling. I am in love with foil stars. Remember these when you were a little kid in elementary school and you get a star? These are those stars. Love those. Those will be fun for journaling. Look at these. Now, I have all these in my Amazon shop under, under art journaling. Go to amazon.com slash shop slash Teresa Kogut. And all the products I'm showing you here are in my shop. Look at these. These are so awesome. Those would be great for journaling. Look at these. Look, guys. If I can get it to focus. Can you see all those stars? Look at that. So I could put some glue on my page and sprinkle some of these on there. Awesome. I love stars. Okay, so Liz Matthews, Liz, 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 <laughs> from Hello by Liz Matthews. Hello from Liz Matthews. I think it's from. She has that one sticker book. I have that one too. Well, they have another one that's called the Botanist Sticker Anthology. And if you like flowers and bugs and butterflies, this one, I like this one better than the other one because the other book let me go grab it i'm just wondering if these are the same company mcmillan it has it looks so similar to the other book this one says dk huh This is, no, they're not even the same company. I guess I thought they were. They're very similar. This one is the Aquarian sticker book. Now, there's so many beautiful stickers in here, but there's weird, weird stuff in here that I probably will never use. Like, I'm not going to use a snake sticker. I'm just telling you right now. Probably not. Well, these fish actually could be kind of fun to use. But um, there's awesome stickers in here, and then there's really off the wall crazy stickers in here too <laughs> like a big loaf of bread big loaf of bread french bread or whatever that's called this you know just just some strange little things in here but they're all they're fun don't get me wrong they're fun so this one's fun and quirky and a little bit strange this one is all beautifulness. <laughs> it's all plants, bugs, butterflies. Oh my gosh, look at it. So for art journaling, I think this book is going to be phenomenal. Look at all those mushrooms. I love that. Moths, butterflies, bees. There's a bee right there. Um, look at this page. So this is the back. This is actually two huge stickers. I mean, you could cut out the flower, you know, some of the flowers for art journaling. So anyways, I just wanted to share that with you. If you're into flowers and you want to use 
I'll have a link to this also in my uh, Amazon shop. Look at that page. Those are stickers. It's just two big, huge stickers. What else we got? Cactuses. Okay, so got that. Then I bought these scrapbooking uh, little file things. Because I have tons of scrapbooking. I use, or scrapbooking, scrapbooking papers. I use uh, scrapbook papers to collage on my cradled board and then I do paintings over them. And then when I sand, I can see some of the texture. My dog, drinking water. <laughs> uh, so I have tons of scrapbook papers. So I'm, I bought three of these. I'm going to buy more. I wanted to see if I liked the size and, you know, if they were made good quality, which they are. So I'm going to get more of them. I'm going to stack them up and then I'm going to put, you know, scrapbook paper. Uh, I'm going to have one that's going to say stickers. I'm going to have one that says, uh, like, magazine cutouts and just different subject matter or different style papers and stuff. I bought some glue sticks. I know you want to see those. I mean, who doesn't want to see glue sticks? <laughs> glue sticks for uh, journaling. And then, I love this thing. We had one of these when I was a kid. It's a Dymo embossing ma label maker. Easy for me to say. And I love these things. Do you guys remember these? Did you have one when you were a kid? Oh my gosh. I didn't even know they still made these. But I saw someone using one on a video and I was like, they still make those? I'm getting one today. And I honestly went and ordered it with all this other stuff today, or that day. So there you go. Got one of those. And then the last thing I wanna show you. I got a moleskin little journal. Love those. Then I bought these, just little paper journals. These are nice, just they're, it's actually like a, I think they call them bullet journals. See how it's got all the dots on the paper. It just helps you to draw straight, straight lines. I need to slow down. That's why I'm flubbing up all my words because I'm trying to talk too fast. So these are handy. I'm going to keep one in my purse. It's just a great, a great thing to have when you're out and about, you're stuck at a train for, you know, a half an hour. Cause you know, where we live, we have lots of trains gumming up the system and, or, you know, at the dentist office waiting, blah, blah, blah. Okay. My favorite thing that I got is this amazing, amazing journal. It looks like it's already been journaled, but it's leather. Oh, I wanted to read the little thing that came with it too. I'll read it to you in a second. But look at this. So it's leather bound. It has all these different signatures. One, two, three, four, five, six signatures in it. In the way that they're put in there. Just nice quality. But look at this paper. This paper is so perfect for journaling. You could do watercolor on it. You can do markers. You can paint on it. It's nice and thick. But I love the edges of these pages. But it looks like it's really well made. And I'm super excited to journal in this. So I think I'm going to make this my faith journal. So y'all will be able to watch me work in this over on my other YouTube channel. Uh, it's just... YouTube.com slash C slash Teresa Fogut. I hope it's in here. Come on. Man. Maybe not. Never mind, I can't find it and it makes me crazy because I wanted to show you. They put a little note in that journal and talked about how it's handmade and it had the sweetest note inside. And anyways, if I find it, I will, I will 
we'll put that in here. Okay, my last haul. I had another really great week of haul, didn't I? Valdani Pearl Cotton. I already have a ton of Valdani, but I wanted to try the Pearl Cotton. Doreen Branham, she's Privies and Prim on YouTube. She sells punch needle in her shop and she does a ton of punch needle and she's super sweet. So if you don't follow her and you're into punch needle, you want to do that. So she was on one of the lives on Witch Paint Wednesday one day and she was talking. She said, I wish you would use Valdani in your punch needle patterns because if you're not familiar with Valdani, it's already in three strands. So for punch needle, it totally makes sense. They have gorgeous colors, gorgeous variegated colors. Well, when I first started doing punch needle, I used Valdani in some of my patterns. At first, it was always weeks. Weeks dye works, weeks dye works, weeks dye works. Well, then I found out about Valdani and I started using them because you don't have to separate the floss. So DMC, Classic Color Works, and Weeks Dye Works, those are the three that I use the most. Those are six strands. So when you do punch needle, you have to separate them. That is, to me, so much part of me doing punch needle that I don't even think about it anymore. But anyways, I was curious, because I and I had said during that live, chit-chatting back and forth with Doreen, I said, but, you know, Valdani's so expensive. I not only said that, but when I was using Valdani 10 years ago, the shipping, they're in Canada, they ship from Canada, and it took a long time to get their product in. And I was, back then especially, because I didn't design cross stitch, I was doing tons of punch needle. And I'm like, I need a reliable company that I can get stuff quickly, okay? So anyway, I kind of phased away from using Valdani. I never really thought to go back to check them out. Well, anyway, I ordered their stuff and I had it like a week later from Canada. So they've stepped it up on the shipping, so kudos to them. Also, as far as them being more expensive, I did the work. I did the work behind the scenes, y'all, and I wanna share with you what is going on. <laughs> so if you, if we're talking about the pearl cotton, okay? I'm not talking about their three strand, the cotton. So notice how much bigger these are. Let me go get a regular size cotton one. Okay, so this is their pearl cotton. This is their regular cotton. See the difference? So the pearl cotton, the larger one that I just ordered and just received, it is, it's three strands. It's um, 70, there's 73 yards on one of those balls, okay? They're 550 retail. So I did the math. So they're eight cents, eight cents a yard. But you have to times that times two because all the other quotes I'm gonna give you are six strands, okay? So I times that by two and it's 16 cents. So these are 16 cents a yard. I priced out Classic Color Works and Weeks Dye Works and depending on who you buy it from, they are roughly the same price, which equals between 48 cents and 50 cents a yard. So that's like what, 16 and 16 is 32, plus 16 would be 48. So they're three times as expensive as that pearl cotton from Valdani. And then I did a DMC, they are seven cents a yard. So DMC is the least expensive at seven cents a yard for six strands. And then Valdani comes in second place at 16 cents a yard. Remember that's doubled because it's, it's only three strands at eight cents a yard. So I doubled that to be 16 cents. So it's a little over double the price of DMC. However, it's three times less than Classic Color Works in weeks. 
I just wanted to share that with you guys because I didn't realize that. Their cotton floss is more expensive, but the pearl cotton, which is a beautiful, a beautiful thread, I got the medium weight for punch needle. They have, uh, this is the number, oh, number eight. So there's a number 12, a number eight, and I forget what the other one is. Yeah. Number five. Number five is considered fine. Number eight is the medium. And then number 12, it says heavy. And it actually said on there that it was for rug punching. So I wish I would have ordered one just to see what it was like. Because I'm thinking rug punching, if you're rug punching with wool yarn, that's really thick. So I'm curious, I should have ordered one. In my next order, I will definitely get some. So so the reason I even brought that up is because, well, here was the other thing. Not every shop carries Valdani, okay? Uh, Classic Color Works, Weak Style Works, General Arts, DMC, those are like the standard, I guess, for variegated flosses. Don't quote me on that because I know there's Sulky. I know there's a ton of other floss companies as well. But when I was talking to a couple of different shops, they said those are, you know, General Arts, Weeks Dye Works, Classic Color Works, DMC are like most every shop has those, okay? So Valdani is not carried by all the shops. So that's another reason that designing with Valdani makes me nervous. However, I won't use Valdani in my cross stitch. It will only be for punch needle because it's already separated in three strands and it's in that ball. So I have this adorable vintage Vaseline jar and basically you put the ball in some sort of jar and for punch needle, it makes sense. You punch, punch, punch. See how it just turns and it just turns and turns and turns. It's awesome. So I'm going to start using, for my punch needle, I'm going to start using Valdani mixed in with some other things, especially for background work in big areas. Uh, Valdani makes sense. Okay? So I'm happy to be giving Valdani a second chance for, you know, my punch needle designing. That's it for haul. That's it for my art whips. I will show you my needlework whips soon. <laughs> well, I will record it either tonight at the house or in the morning down in our makeshift studio in the basement. And then whatever else I think to tell you guys. But anyway, that's it for now. Hey guys, <laughs> look at this bright light. Uh, it's not gonna be quite this bright during the show. So. This is my setup for Needlework Expo. I have my booth behind me. I have all the things, all my new releases are hanging behind me. My computer is right here, like my big, nice new computer. We brought it to the house, so I'm in my basement, and the computer screen is gonna go right in front of my face. So that bright light you're seeing is my computer screen will block it so it'll be more like light around me and because i checked it and on my computer uh camera those are the dogs wrestling guys hey athena y'all lay down so <laughs> so anyway i checked the camera on the computer and it's fine it's not this bright and the stuff behind me shows up better but I'm not gonna mess with the lights and risk messing up my situation here. So, I wanted to share with you though what I've been working on needlework wise. So, I'm gonna show you my whips. I'm working on something for Park Designs. So, shh, just between you and me, this is what I'm working on for them. So, I designed this in my cross stitch program actually. So. It's quilt star blocks. So I'm making it into a punch needle. And this is how much I have done. Zoom in a little bit. I should have something behind it, I suppose. Maybe that one. Because I think the light's going right through it. 
that there. So I have quite a ways to go. But I thought I'm going to have this sitting down here. And if I'm not busy in my booth, I can work on this. I'm not one to just sit around. I can't sit there and stare at my computer if no one's at my booth. So I've got this to work on because this I need to get it done and get it sent out next week. So I shouldn't have a problem doing that at all. I'll probably work on it most of the day Tuesday till I get it done. And then for my cross stitch, so I'm working on Winter Bouquet. Here's Winter Bouquet. This is one of my Patreon designs. So what I'm doing is I'm doing the house, the cat, the snowman, the trees uh, over on this side. And then over here I'm doing this snowman and this dog. And I think the house, I think I'm stopping at the house. I can't remember if I'm doing this tree with the bird on top. So anyway, all this side, I've scooched it over so that it, anyway, so it'll be long. It'll be like long and narrow and I'm going to make a little pillow out of it. And because I started so close to the edge, I'm going to have to sew a piece of fabric to my linen. Hold on guys. I'm going to sew a piece of fabric to my linen and give it like a little fabric border. I can't seem to get it straight. Here we go. So you can see I've got the cat, the house, and the first snowman down. I don't have his arms on yet. But uh, and then I'm working on the second snowman and then there's trees that will go in between the two snowmen. And then the dog and then the other house and possibly that other tree with a bird on top. And it will be done. So I did 200, I think I already mentioned this, 204 stitches on Sunday and then Monday I did 193 and I wanted to just keep going at it. <laughs> and if I would have kept at that pace, I'd probably have it done or close to it. But uh, you know, it's busy. It's a busy time right now with the expo and, and all that. Oh, oops, I accidentally put my my uh, needlework expo orders in this. It's the it's the file I was using behind my pieces. Glad I realized that. I can I can just see that's how that stuff happens. You know, had I not noticed I put that in there, I would be looking the rest of the evening for that, and I wouldn't have never thought to look in my cross stitch project bag that's so sticking cute okay so those now you've seen oh that's kind of loud sorry oh i didn't i forget see i don't even think about people watching floss tube with headphones or earbuds or something in so i don't think of loud noises being an issue but who was i watching just recently oh kia b and she said she said she's watched some i think with earbuds and now she understands how crinkling and all that can be annoying but okay I found that so when I was showing you my haul and I showed you that amazing journal that has all that like watercolor paper that's kind of looks torn on the edges well I told you they sent me this cute card if I can do it without a lot of glare it's a cute little card it shows a guy making the journal and it says dear member Thanks. May the user of this journal feel the peace and love put into every step and stitch of its creation. For us, this is soul satisfying work and we feel fortunate to share it with you. We would love to hear your thoughts. See your pictures with gratitude. Leather Village. Welcome to Leather, the Leather Village family. And then there's a person's signature. Isn't that cool? Oh, it's the person's name. His name is Shanker. Whoa. Shanker Chaudhary, senior artisan, maker of your journal. And I think that's a picture of him making the journal. Isn't that cool? So it's a handmade work of art in itself. So I can't wait to fill it with all kinds of pretty pictures. So what else did I want to go over? I think that's it. We're not doing giveaway. Um, haul whips. Um, oh, I had some people send in some really cute things to show for their fully finished pieces. I will do that 
next week because I'm just discombobulated because I'm this is kind of piecemeal together so anyways I think I'm gonna go now and what I'm gonna do now though real quick is just show you I'm gonna show you a little inside peek as to what the expo looks like and then um I might I don't know it depends maybe Monday when I have a feeling Monday won't be as busy maybe somebody will like I'll ask somebody hey do you want to say hi to plus tube and then I can record my camera or my camera my computer screen like wouldn't it be cool when Steph and Barb from you know keepsakes Stephanie you know Stephanie Pam and Steph just keep stitching <laughs> but she will be doing ordering and stuff with Barb. So when they come in my booth, wouldn't it be cool if I said, hey, you guys wanna say hi to Floss Tube? And then I could take my camera and film my screen and they can say hi. I don't know. I'm gonna see if, if I remember to do it, number one, or if anybody's interested in taking a second out to say hi. But I'm gonna log in and I'm going to show you a little bit of the insider look at my booth. All right, see you in a minute. Okay, y'all, if you are not following Rachel and Sue from Floss Toss on YouTube, which is their Floss Tube channel. It's called Floss Toss. You have to check them out. They are so awesome. Now this is Rachel and this is Sue. Rachel, I know lives about an, two hours from me and in Michigan. I'm not sure where Sue lives, but Sue is a yarn dyer. She uh, dyes yarn for knitting. So they came from the knitting world and now they are doing floss tube and doing cross stitch and just adding to their wonderful creativity. So follow them on YouTube. But also I want to mention that they are doing a pal, a punch along using my design for you, which is the sheep. Um, this is Rachel's site, treehousefiberarts.com. So if you want to join their punch along, let's find it on here. I wonder if I can search it. Let's see, punch needle. Okay, right here, pre-order punch along with floss toss. So let's click on it. So there you go. I will put a direct link in my description box below, but they are so, so Rachel is including in her kit the Ultra Punch, the design of mine for you, which comes with the weaver's cloth, but you have to trace it on yourself. And then uh, also in the kit, Rachel is getting all the floss together, okay? So, oh, and I think you can get, yeah, you can get a full kit which has the hoop. It's the, the lap stand one that has a seven inch hoop and then a nine inch hoop on it. So if you already have the kit, or if you already have the hoop and the punch needle and you just need the pattern and the fabric and the floss, you can select which one. So the full kit for the hoop, the punch needle, the design with the weaver's cloth and the floss is 120. If you already have a hoop and a punch needle, then it is 40 so you can choose there she said that she is going to start the punch along the end of this month the end of march so these are the things that you get there's the morgan hoop the ultra punch my design and then the floss which she doesn't show it pictured but anyways i wanted to give them a shout out about that because i think it would be so fun if you guys join them for a punch along
Okay, so this is my booth. Uh, this is wholesale pricing, so ignore any of the pricing that you see. So I have on here all of my new releases plus all of my releases from 2020, and I'm also gonna add some of the best sellers. I have to do that yet tonight uh, because there's gonna be a lot of new shops coming to this show that would probably be interested to know. So I wanted to just show you that so they can click on it and it shows a nice big picture and it has all the information up there and they can exit out of that. So when I get to my booth, so they can uh, place wholesale order here. If they do that right there, then it takes them to my online order form. Uh, start practice chat, which let me just click that and see what happens. So I'll enter my name in here, T-E-R-E-S-A. K-O-G-U-T, enter booth, loading virtual chat. Ta-da! So that's what I will look like on camera. It's, there we go. Hi guys! <laughs> so that's what they'll see when they come in my booth. Uh, huh. That's really different than what my FaceTime camera was showing. So I can tell now I need to scooch in a little bit because I don't like that you can see that over there. I want them just to see my booth as the backdrop. So I'm glad I'm doing this so, <laughs> so I can see what the heck. So, so this area here, this big gray area, when someone comes in, this is where they're going to show up. Okay, and then we can talk and I tell them how they can place their order. They can scroll down and look at everything. So that's basically it. Bye, guys. I'm going to go to the main hall just real quick. I don't know if I'll be able to. And this will show you. Yeah, it's oh, I have to go into edit mode. That's what it was. Edit mode, main hall. Nope. Preview mode. There it is. Okay, so there we go. Wholesale trade only. And you can see here they've got a um, new designer group, new designer group. And then you can see all of the accoutrement designs, Annie B's folk art. Look at all these amazing people that are at the show. I'm really excited for tomorrow. It should be a lot of fun. So I'm just kind of scrolling down so y'all can see. So basically it says right here, the elegant thread, click to enter booth. So if I click that, I will go into her booth and I'll be able to see all of her things that she has to offer, plus you know the wholesale pricing and how to order and all of that. But I'm not gonna do that because I don't wanna reveal anybody's wholesale pricing. Oh, that's cool. I like how she has this note on there. Fairy wool in the wood. Cassandra, I'm not familiar with her. I would love to have time to go visit booths. <laughs> if I were on, the whim, on a whim, look at all that beautiful linen, fox and rabbit designs. They have beautiful cross stitch and linen. Awesome. This is really neat because you know when we go, oh look, hello from Liz Matthews. Um, when we go to market, we, oh here's ink circles. We don't, oh heartstring samplery. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. <laughs> um, you know, we're all so busy. We're stuck in our, our rooms, you know, writing orders and, and all of that. Sunday is usually slow. And so that's when you get out of your booth and you go visit other designers and you go make contact with the people you buy linen from and you buy uh, like Lady Dot Creates and Dames of the Needle and you place orders and, and all of that. That's when you do it is on Sunday. But that's when all the other people, all the other designers are doing the same thing. So you never really get to see each other unless you make arrangements to go out to dinner or something. So anyways, here's Lady Dot Creates, Kathy Barrick, La Di Da, Lily Violet, Kirkland Designs, Lindy Stitches. Oh, I love that. Oh, this is so fun. So look how nice this is. Look at how many vendors there are. Nikki's Creations. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. 
So it goes in alphabetical order. So I, I told Annie from Annie B's Folker, I'm like, you're going to be so busy. Like there's mine right there. I said, you're going to be so busy right at 10 o'clock because they'll probably just go right down the line. That's what I'm guessing. Although here's the thing. Only so many people are allowed in a booth at a time. So I think three or four people can be in your booth at a time. So if that happens, or if you go to go in a booth and there's too many people in it, you know, you'll just go to the next one. Or some people might start with, with a Z and work their way backwards just so that, you know, it's not too crowded. So anyways, I will let you guys know how it goes. All right. Take care. Bye. Favor as a token of my gratitude. Thanks.